multi-tenant software architecture, which enables multiple users to share a single instance of a software application and its underlying resources, is the foundation of most software-as-a-service offerings. Software as a Service or SaaS is a software licensing and delivery model in which software is licensed on a subscription basis and is centrally hosted. One of the most challenging tasks in SaaS development is ensuring data isolation, where each tenant's data is isolated and remains invisible to other tenants. In this episode, I will present one of the most outstanding capabilities of Blazorplate that allows developers to build multi-tenant business applications in an effective and easy manner. With just a few settings, you can quickly and easily switch your application to operate in single-tenant mode or multi-tenant mode. A tenant can be an individual user, but more frequently, it's a group of users, such as a customer organization, that share common access with specific privileges to the software instance. In single-tenant architecture, a single instance of the software and supporting infrastructure serves a single customer. With a single tenancy, each customer has their own independent database and instance of the software. So essentially, there is no sharing happening with this option. In multi-tenant architecture, a single instance of a software application and its underlying database serves multiple tenants. Each tenant has a dedicated share of the instance, including data, configuration, and user management. The data associated with each tenant is isolated from and invisible to the other tenant sharing the application instance, ensuring data security and privacy for all tenants. Now let's see how the multi-tenancy feature works in practice within the Blazorplate environment. In the previous episodes, we used the XYZ Corporation tenant to explore so many features in Blazorplate. Now I'm going to create a new tenant using the host application that comes integrated with Blazorplate. I will name the new tenant ABC Corporation. During the tenant creation process, the system will see the tenant database with some default objects, such as the default users, roles, and permissions. In many multi-tenant web applications, a domain name can be used as a way to identify a tenant where each tenant accesses their environment via their own subdomain to help with routing requests and to provide a branded experience to your customers. Blazorplate uses subdomains as a tenant identification strategy, and this is the most robust strategy and probably the most widely used. In the Blazorplate development environment, you don't have to create a new subdomain for each tenant. Instead, you only need to add a wildcard DNS record that points to your Blazor app hostname. A wildcard DNS record is a record that will match requests for non-existent subdomains. Using the wildcard DNS record, you can create an unlimited number of tenants, including subdomains on the fly. Now I'm going to sign into my new tenant, then, I'm going to go to the users list. As we can see in this list, the system automatically generated some default users accounts for this tenant and one of these accounts belongs to John Smith. Now let's compare this list with the users list related to the XYZ Corporation tenant, just to see the difference. As you notice, there is another account belonging to John Smith in XYZ Corporation tenant even though his accounts in both tenants are linked with the same email address. As you see, the main difference between his accounts is that this one has a profile picture and the other account in ABC Corporation tenant does not. This difference indicates that you can use the same email address to create different accounts in multiple tenants within Blazorplate without any conflicts since the data associated with each tenant is fully isolated from the other tenants. To make sure that the data in both tenants are completely isolated from each other, I'm going to make some major changes to John Smith's account in ABC Corporation tenant and compare it with John Smith's account in the other tenant. As I logged in as an admin, I'm going to change the account owner's name from John Smith to Thomas Williams. Then, I'm going to modify his login email as well. Now I'm going to save these changes to this account that belongs to the ABC Corporation tenant and compare it with the other account in the XYZ Corporation tenant. Therefore, I'm going to refresh the users list page in the XYZ Corporation tenant to make sure that John Smith's account is still intact. This comparison indicates that each tenant's data is isolated from and invisible to the other tenants even though they share the same database. In Blazorplate, data isolation is not only confined to simple data operations, but also takes place in every corner of the system. Let's take another example to prove that the policies and configurations for each tenant are also isolated. 
I'm gonna force the new users who want to sign up for a new account in the ABC Corporation to use a complex password during registration while allowing the new users to sign up for a new account in the XYZ Corporation using a simple password. Now I'm gonna log out of both tenants and then, I'm gonna sign up for a new account on ABC Corporation tenant using a complex password. However, in this case, the system should enforce password complexity rules and prevent me from signing up as the provided password doesn't comply with the tenant password policy. When signing up on XYZ Corporation tenant, the situation should be different. It should allow me to create a new account using a simple password according to the tenant password policy. As I mentioned before, with just a few settings, you can quickly and easily switch your application to operate in single tenant mode or multi-tenant mode. So let's see how this could be done. I'm going to open up the Blazor Plate solution in Visual Studio. Then I'm going to open the app settings file within the Web API project. As we can see, the connection string points to a database called Binary Plate. This database serves only a single tenant. In single tenant mode, a single instance of the software serves a single customer, where each customer has their own database. In multi-tenant mode, a single instance of the application and its underlying database serves multiple tenants or customers. To force the system to operate in multi-tenant mode, I'm going to change the tenant mode value from 1 to 2. Now I'm going to create a multi-tenant database by generating a new migration script and executing it. Before executing the migration script, I want to make sure that I don't have any databases in my SQL Server. Now I'm going to execute the script to create our first shared database that supports multi-tenants. As the script was successfully executed, I'm going to check our newly created database to see how it supports multi-tenancy. So let's take a look at the applicants table for example. When expanding the table columns node, we will see the tenant ID field, which is basically a unique identifier that represents the record owner. The primary function of the tenant ID field is to isolate the data related to each tenant and prevent these data from being visible to other tenants, ensuring data security and privacy for all tenants. Now I'm going to switch the application back to the single tenant mode by changing the value of the tenant mode option to 1. After changing the value, I'm going to add and execute a new migration script to update our database. Now I'm going to refresh the database, and then I'm going to go back to the applicant's table columns to see if there is any difference. As we notice, the tenant ID field does not exist because it is no longer needed in single tenant mode. Thank you for watching.